Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is in Seoul. He will be meeting with the South Korean President Yoon So Kyul today. Now, the visit comes just a few weeks after both the countries signed the Washington Declaration Pact. The aim of the latest summit is to counter China's growing assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific and also to strengthen security cooperation amid nuclear threats from North Korea. To decode Kishida's Seoul visit, we're now being joined by Professor Benoit Hardy Chatrand, international affairs expert and adjunct professor of political science at the Temple University in Japan. Thank you so much for joining us and we're on, Professor. Thank you. Right now, this is the first visit by a Japanese leader to Seoul in nearly 12 years. Um, help us understand as to what is the significance of this visit and what is likely to dominate the talks between the two leaders today. Right. Well, it is a very significant visit. Let's remember that South Korea and Japan are two important U.S. allies. In fact, they are the two most important U.S. allies in the whole Indo-Pacific regions. And these two American allies have had very strained uh, relations over the last 10 years or so. And that is despite the fact that they have uh, shared values, they share a similar political system. Uh, they also have similar security concerns over North Korea. You also mentioned uh, China earlier. Uh, but despite all of that, their relations have been very unstable because of long running disputes, mostly related to history and especially the history of Japanese colonization of the Korean Peninsula in the early 20th century. Um, so for about 10 years, there were very few meetings between the two sides. And now, two months ago in March, the uh, president of South Korea visited Japan. And now, only two months later, we see the uh, prime minister of Japan uh, visiting South Korea. As you said, for the first time, the first bilateral summit in South Korea in 12 years. So it is quite significant. It signals a somewhat of a return to right. normalcy between the two sides. And they're going to talk about very important topics like uh, security issues, as you mentioned, uh, technology issues, cooperation on many different spheres. Right, Professor Benoit, you, you spoke about uh, strained relations between South Korea and Japan. I was just coming to that, that the South Korean president is also facing criticism uh, that he has given more than what he has received from Japan. Do you think that the latest visit by Kishida will be able to mend ties between both the countries? Uh, well, to be honest, what happened in March when uh, the, South, the South Korean president came to uh, Japan already took, it was a big step towards mending the relationship. Now, if this is a successful uh, visit by the uh, Japanese prime minister, if there is a positive outcome, and especially if we see the Japanese prime minister um, reciprocating some of the efforts that have been seen from the South Korean sides over the last few months, then we could probably say that the relationship is truly uh, on, the, on the mend. Um, so it depends really on, again, the outcome. It depends on whether on the declaration, on uh, what we hear from both sides after the meeting. And um, so if, if that happens, indeed, that will be a very important step towards normalization of their relationship. But indeed, there's been a lot of criticism in South Korea. Uh, because it has been perceived as though South Korea has done, has done a lot more to reestablish uh, the relationship on firmer ground. So it's going to be important for Japan to also be perceived as uh, right. doing an equal amount of effort to reestablish this relation. Right, Professor. Now, since the time Yoon So Kyol has become the president of South Korea, he has actively been taking steps to strengthen ties with Japan. Uh, but help us understand as to what does Seoul expect out of Kishida uh, when he visits uh, Seoul today? Uh, well, there are a few things that uh, the South Korean uh, president expects from uh, Japan. So first of all, I've got to say that since Yoon, uh, the President Yoon was elected, um, he has made it clear that he wanted to improve relations with Japan, also wanted to strengthen relations with the United States, and has been more critical of China. So in that sense, it is important for the South Korean president to get a commitment on the side of, uh, from the side of Japan, from the Japanese side. Uh, towards uh, greater uh, 
security cooperation, especially when it comes to countering uh, the North Korean threat. Because obviously, for both Seoul and Tokyo, North Korea remains the most in, the most immediate security threat. So being able to uh, improve the relationship is going to make it easier for both sides, for example, to share intelligence, to better counter potential provocations uh, that will be, that might be coming out from North Korea. And another thing that South Korea expects, I would say, is um, uh, great Greater steps towards um, re-establishing or greater steps towards uh, expressing uh, remorse, expressing more regret towards historical right. issues between right. South Korea and Japan. Right, Professor, like you mentioned that uh, South Korea and Japan are both key allies of the United States of America. Uh, but how do you think North Korea and China will react to the latest summit between Kishida and Yoon? This is a great question. So North Korea is, we can know immediately, North Korea is not going to react well. North Korea is never, uh, never takes very positively uh, expressions of deterrence, expressions of commitment towards greater cooperation mm -hmm. between South Korea and any of its allies. So this is a given. On the side of China, I think this is the most interesting question here. China obviously has been, you know, has been taking a much more assertive approach in the mm -hmm. Indo-Pacific the last 10 years or so and any steps between any steps to reinforce relations between South Korea and Japan and the United States is going to be perceived negatively by China because China of course its interest is to not see these allies um, reinforcing the relations this is why for many years China has been trying to pry South Korea away from the United States, try to bring it into its sphere of influence. So this is not going to be a very welcome development. And we've already heard over the last couple of months, China being critical of efforts by the United States and South Korea to reinforce their relations. Right. Also, let's talk about how, I mean, what would improved military cooperation between Japan and South Korea mean for U.S. in the Indo-Pacific? It certainly would be very positive for uh, for the United States. For the U.S., its deterrence posture, its military posture in the region, uh, is largely dependent on its uh, alliances in the region. Of course, the United States has a lot of alliances in the region, but like I said, its most important are the ones with Japan and South Korea. The United States has 50,000 soldiers, more or less, in Japan, and has around 28,500 soldiers in South Korea. Uh, therefore, it's posture is largely dependent on this. So if you have greater cooperation between Japan and South Korea, it allows the United States to better uh, coordinate, to better have, uh, to have better contingency plans in the case of a conflict that might erupt over North Korea or perhaps even some potential conflict in the Taiwan Strait. So that's why this is very important for the United States. Right. And do you think in, in your viewpoint, the latest meet uh, between the South Korean president and Japan's prime minister will be able to counter uh, China's growing expansionism at the moment in the Indo-Pacific? Well, there's not, to be very honest, this is a great question, but to be very honest, I mean, China is not really a country that can be contained. It is now a superpower with uh, growing uh, capabilities. Uh, it has been able to extend and expand its influence largely in the region over the last 10 years, even more than the last 10 years, of course, uh, but especially since President Xi Jinping has been in office. Now, what the United States can do, what Japan and South Korea can do, is better coordinate perhaps their approach. Uh, they can be, they can have a unified uh, message when it comes to what they perceive as their concerns uh, or their shared concerns over China. And that can certainly help uh, to, you know, to, to have a to stand up to a certain extent to China, to push back. But uh, we have to be realistic. There are limits to what can be done to uh, really push back against what you call this kind of more assertive approach uh, by China. But of course, also India is going to be watching that with a lot of interest, given its own concerns with China. Right. Also, let's talk about the trilateral meeting between US, Japan and South Korea. What would dominate the talks then? 
So the trilateral meeting is going to be happening uh, just about a week or so from now, just uh, around May 17th, when there is when there is the G7 summit in Hiroshima in Japan, and that is going to be a, a very crucial meeting. Trilateral cooperation is something that has been a little bit uh, on the decline over the last few years, especially because of the difficult relationship between South Korea and Japan. But now having this meeting between Biden, uh, Yoon, and uh, Kishida is going to make it a lot easier for all sides Absolutely. to coordinate their approach. And they're going to talk a lot about their security concerns. Um, they're going to talk about trade, technology, supply chains, uh, re uh, resilience in the region. This is going to be dominating the agenda and also how to better respond to the effects of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Absolutely. Professor Benoit, my last question to you before we let you go. Um, also shed some light about how the South Koreans are reacting to Kishida's visit to Seoul. Do they still have vengeance against Yoon's government in dropping demands for Japanese companies to compensate uh, the victims? A poll shows that 60% of South Korean public oppose the latest agreement. What do you have to say on this? Yeah, absolutely. The South Korean public has long held some uh, resentment against Japan because not only of historical issues, but a perception that Japan has not really been forthcoming and apologizing and expressing remorse for uh, the historical wrongs of the early uh, 20th century. So this is not going to change. You mentioned the survey. There are plenty of surveys over the last few years that have shown uh, this negative feeling towards Japan. And unless Japan does more to uh, express or to um, do a, an equal effort as South Korea did when it comes to mending the relationship, I feel that the South Korean public is going to continue to hold or try to hold uh, the South Korean president to account for, you know, doing perhaps too much in the eyes of the South Korean public to um, to get closer to Japan. So in, it is indeed a risk for uh, the South Korean president because of this long-standing anti-Japanese feeling. Right, Professor Benoit, we'll have to wait and uh, see how the summit between uh, Yoon so Kyol and Fumio Kishida pans out later today. But thank you so much for joining us from Beyond and sharing your insights with us on this. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.